Flowers are blooming and therefore you have allergies, so it's time to sit inside and play some board games. It's the best of Board Game Geek. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We are the brothers from Bird. That's right. It's the best of Board Game Geek. We're going to talk about the hottest games of the month. Couple things just around um, BGG are super, super that we've been cool. into. Yep. Yeah, it was super new. You know what? Let's start off with the news as usual. So BGG Con in the fall is open for registration. So if you're looking to go to BGG Con in the fall, you now can register to do so. It'll be from November 13th through the 17th. If you really want to just sit around and play games, BGG Con is a great way to do that. It's so chill. It's so nice. We love BGG Cons. We usually go to both of them at this point every single year. It's really, really fun. So you can register for the one from November 13th to 17th. BGG in the fall. Check it out. We, as usual, have a store update for you. We have uh, new Quacks bits, or I should say, a new printing of the Quacks bits uh, coming soon for both the expansion and the base game in the next couple months. There's also a, a cool bag and tokens uh, that is a randomizer for selecting factions for Smash Up. You can root your hand around in the bag and pull out a couple of random factions to then smash together, especially if you have all of the Smash Up content or a bunch of it. It's a really kind of cool way to uh, just easily get uh, different pairings of factions each time. There's a bunch of different sets of metal coins that are available, like pirate theme and kind of more uh, dwarf theme and stuff, different fantasy stuff. A lot of cool things to explore and more, including a journal, so you can make sure you don't forget any of your games you played at game night. So go check out all those on the store update to see what kind of goodies you can get for yourself. So that's a little bit of board game geek news, but now let's go to the hottest part of the list because we're gonna talk about the hotness. Let's do it. That's right, we're gonna talk about the 10 hottest games of the month. These are the ones That's that everyone's one. talking about, things that people are clicking yeah, on. All over the list all Games month. that are getting delivered, games that are in crowdfunding and more. Let's get into number 10. Number 10's been here for a couple months now. This is Wormspan. Oh, you know it. People are, are loving some Wormspan, love some Wingspan, and so uh, the one with worms in it. <laughs> Worms being like wyverns, wy you know? wyverns yeah, dragons, yeah. yeah exactly, so a, your draconius or dra 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 Dracon? Drac oh gosh. Draconologist? Doesn't matter. Sure. You're dragon you enthusiasts. Dragons. Yeah. Um, there is a name for it. I, I'm getting in the presentation one. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, you are uh, similar to Wingspan. You are going to be playing out a tableau of, of different dragons and stuff. There's different ways that you can kind of go about taking your actions and what you pay. Take your actions, you can actually like store money over from round to yeah. round and, and have kind of like an you know, varying amounts of turns per round. So it's mm -hmm. not fixated like in uh, Wingspan, but it's a lot of those similar ideas of uh, kind of preparing uh, spaces for dragons to come uh, by giving them the things that they are seeking out. And then they will give you abilities and powers to yeah. use uh, throughout the rest of the game. So this is one that personally like, very intrigued to try. I've heard I've heard it's a little harder than Wingspan. It's a little yeah. bit maybe okay tighter, with... a little more tight on the resources and stuff. You're not just going to get a bajillion eggs. Yeah, um, those are <laughs> right. pretty rare and things. Um, and so I'm excited to see yeah. kind of like something that looks familiar but has it forges its own path yeah. as well in terms yeah. of mechanisms and stuff. Really hard to try. Yeah, so, so having a chance to, to table it, but really really looking forward. That's Wingspan number ten. Let's get number nine. Number nine is Dune War for Arrakis. Ooh. This uh, delivered to people like a month or so ago, but people have been playing it like crazy. I know uh, we're at Dice Tower West. Uh, one of our friends played a, a big old game of it. But this is uh, made by the same people who made War of the Ring. We're making a game, uh, a kind of asymmetric game um, of Dune. So one player is playing the Harkonnens, the other player is playing the Atreides. Um, and, uh, or are you the Fremen in it? I think you're the Fremen. You're the Fremen, not the, not Paul's the Atreides. part of that, yeah, I think. Yeah. Exactly, right? But yeah, and there's like sandworms and stuff. But yeah, it's again, it's like if you like War of the Ring, which is you know War, Lord of the Rings in a box, it's so so good. I do really want to try Dune Four because I like Dune a lot. I like the world of Dune, and with that design group behind it, yeah. it's like man, that's got to be so so good. People seem to be really really enjoying it. I know. I really want to try it. It's just getting in people's hands now. So hopefully we can track down a copy yeah, to, to give a go because we're big fans of War of the Ring and fans of Dune. So yeah. I think it's going to be a right up our alley. Yeah, uh, it's jelly baby. You know, getting getting after it. That's number nine. Dune: The War for Arrakis. 
Number eight is uh, pretty new to the list, but I am very excited about this oh, one. This is SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Extraterrestrial Intelligence. This is uh, CG, a game from CGE. It looks like it's gonna be their Essen release. Yep. Um, and yeah, I, I like CGE games in general. I'm also, I love astronomy. Um, yeah. I've taken like an astrobiology course, which was basically talking about like SETI was part of it, because is a real thing where there's all these like satellites looking for extra yeah, see, see if you can spot maybe any someone's sort of, just being like hey and just like, like we're it out. doing that we're, we're doing that we're just being like we're here you know so you it's know? like so why not someone else doing it's that. super cool so this one's got this really interesting like multi-tiered spinning board yeah. where i think it's like advantageous to be like launching at certain points and you're trying to go to different parts of the solar system essentially looking for like traces of extraterrestrial life and stuff yeah and so i think that board will kind of at different times rotate and reveal things yeah. celestial bodies things you can see and other you times things go around the sun which is in the yeah. center Right, Which so. is like real, like sometimes things come into our kind yeah. of view and stuff. Um, There's like so, a bunch of multi-use cards and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like 200 so. multi-use cards. It just seems like CGE goodness, right? Like yeah. I really like CGE Euro games and game this looks greatness. like it's very much in that realm. Yeah, we hope so. Anyway, we're personally very hopeful for that one, but uh, we'll hope to see more information soon. That kind of just got announced as their yeah. main release of the year later in the year. So I'm sure there'll be more kind of info Hopefully, as we yeah. go on, but... Uh, that's a pretty cool theme for a game. Yeah, so we're personally right. invested in kind of astronomy and all that yeah. stuff. So that is SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Number seven is going to be Salt in Sea. This is a, a game by Devere that's in the kind of White Castle size box. Yeah, but it's smaller very box, big gameplay. Big game for that size box. Much bigger than like a White Castle in terms of like length, complexity, and all those kinds of things. Salt and Sea has got yeah. a lot going on. It lists two hours on the box, and that's real. Like pretty that, accurate. It, it is a, pretty a longer game. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and this one is kind of about um, the Salt and Sea, which is here in Southern California, um, and it's about the kind of... Mining lithium. Yeah, it's kind of a, a view of the, the prospects of mining, mining lithium in the area using ge geothermal... Uh, heat and stuff like that from uh, all the salt. Yeah, because you're basically drilling down, getting brine, yeah. you know, which is like salt and stuff like that. You can then turn that into geothermal energy and then also lithium. And uh, but this game, it's like, it's interesting because it's like there's three companies and you're trying to get stocks in those companies. You're yep. also trying to sell to those companies, which increases their value and stuff like that. But it's also got interesting kind of multi-use cards where your cards are your money because the cards will either be worth one dollar, three dollars, or five dollars. Right. But then on the other side of that card is an action that you could do that's basically gonna be the same actions that you can do on your main board, but much better versions. Especially if it's like a $5 card, it's gonna be a really, really great good. action, but also it's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but then you're not using that for that money, but if you use it for its action, it'll then come back to you. But if you need, but you're constantly need to spend money and right. you have to spend these cards. So it's this constant like, do you want to spend this card even though you really wanted to do this action? It's a really interesting kind of push and pull with that yeah. in a, a big, heavy, long game that again comes in a pretty small package, but it's, it's fun. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's got a lot of crunchy decisions in terms of, you know, uh, something I guess to be aware of is like with every single card you're getting and stuff, there's multiple decisions to make. Yeah. So it can, you know, mess it's with tough. your brain in that way. but. Uh, yeah, you are, you're kind of um, building out mining stuff, working on those uh, companies and kind of working your way up. So it's kind of in an economic game, sort of in that way, in terms of uh, what you're ultimately trying to do. So that is uh, the Salton Sea at number seven. Indeed. Another one from De Beer. Let's get to number six. Number six is gonna be Galactic Cruise. Oh yeah. We're going on some cruises. Uh, this is, at least time of uh, filming this, will be finishing up its uh, campaign. Yep, the crowd um, yep. Yeah, this is kind of a big uh, a new game from Kinson Key Games, who I think are a new publisher, but it's very kind of Lacerda inspired. It's got some Kanban vibes, yeah. but you're putting on galactic cruises. So these are like cruises in space that people, families, different people can kind of go on. And you're going on like different destinations and you have like a cruise route and you can build out your ships in like all these different ways. And there's all these avenues. We've actually gotten to play this game three or four times yeah, now, which has been uh, really cool. And I, I really like it, but it's a big old heavy, game with a really cool theme though. Yeah, I love the theme. It's really kind of, it has fun with it where the, you're building out these shuttles and you can have different um, kind of things that are, you know, entertainment stuff for your passengers and you hope to make things. So there's like a zero G circus and like yeah. paintball, like in space yeah. and like things like that where it's just funny to think of like, what would this cruise be if it really existed? Um, and it does like a lot of those uh, kind of big games where you're trying to be as efficient as you can. Uh, you can invest in technologies. 
uh, there's uh, ways to put your worker here, but you can take actions on spaces that are adjacent to where you are. So you can kind of build up this whole infrastructure. Yeah. And there's a lot of avenues you can explore in order to gain points in the game. So there really is seemingly yeah. uh, a lot of uh, kind of a nice sandbox to play in um, while you put on these cruises and <laughs> try to make as happy a guest as possible. Yeah. Um, for your business. So yeah, really fun ones that we personally have really enjoyed. Uh, and it's just finishing up that ca crowdfunding campaign. Yeah. Looks like it was pretty big success for them. Hopefully oh, they're happy hope, with hopefully that. Hopefully happy, yeah. Um, but that's Galactic Cruise at number six. Number five is Mythwind. Right, yeah. This is, uh, this uh, is back on crowdfunding right now. It's doing yep. the second printing. That's kinda. right, yep. So it's just gotten delivered to people and they're printing it again. So Mythwind is a big, uh, fairly open-ended, open. cooperative Kind of just stop game. playing whatever you want. Like, it doesn't really have an end. I think it's just sort of about exploring. Yeah, it's just cozy. And, yeah. yeah, so it's kind of a cozy uh, game where you are playing as a certain uh, character and your character is gonna have really its own own kind of thing that it does. Yeah, it has a whole different board per yeah. character, yeah. Different board, like there's this farmer that I wanna play as that has like these polyomino tiles that you're placing on your board and no one else has anything of that nature, yeah. for example. Uh, and you are kind of exploring story elements and stuff, but it is very open in that. Yeah, they're kind of like, you can sort of just be done whenever you're done or just sort of yeah. go over here and do all that. Wild. So yeah. I, I'm really curious to play yeah. it, uh, on that uh, basis to be like, okay, well, what's that look like? You yeah. know what I mean? And I think it just seems to want to reward the idea of like exploration versus maybe um, uh, you know, uh, a fixated endpoint, um, you know, and things like that. So and yeah. with each character, it seems like a whole different kind of uh, thing that you're doing. Yeah, so, it's got a great look. Curious about it. I'm just, I'm so curious, but it's it's meant to be, it's like advertised, it's like a very cozy game. Yeah, very relaxed. Real, just kind of relaxed and stuff. So it's just, it's just cool. It just feels very different. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to try it. Yeah. I know, I wanna, I wanna find out. Yeah, so I that find is out. Uh, <laughs> Mythwind at number five. Number four is gonna be a new game by Chip Theory Games. Um, this is gonna be Roth. Roth is designed and illustrated by Manny Tremblay. So this is the first time they're doing an outside designer. Yeah. Yep, yep. And this is kind of an area control game. We've had a chance to play a couple times now where everyone has a faction. And the interesting about this is you're just kind of straight up area control vying for different areas. The different yeah. areas be worth different amount of points. They might also have some like spoils of war kind of stuff. But everyone has their own faction. Everyone's faction is like kind of OP. Um, yeah, you, all of you have sort of a, a, a broken, super broken strong, ability, yeah. seemingly like, well, that strat's unbeatable. It was like, well, I have something over here that no one else can do yeah, either exactly. as well. So. And so, but it's done with Man and Tremblay art. It's got this really it's beautiful, cool. like, neon, super crazy. neon looking art. But it's it's really fun. I liked it a lot. It's it's for especially for a chip theory game. It's much simpler than most of their other games, yep. but still meant got, to like, be the, more accessible. Those factions, which are very asymmetric and do feel very different and stuff like that, but yeah, it was cool. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. We got to play it at a couple different player counts, and it was it was fun. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like you get to uh, draft dice every round that will dictate the actions that you take. So there's this pool. You roll out all these dice, yep. and then we go around the table, selecting one at a time. So from round to round, the the vibe of the game itself might shift. If yeah. you roll a bunch of attacky dice. There's gonna be more fighting going on this round. There yeah. might be a round where you, in theory, could roll none. Not yeah. likely, but Not you could roll reason. none. And and that's more about positioning and jockeying around the board. So I think that's kind of a really interesting little twist on it is that what's available for actions that you can take may or may not be you know, around from yeah. round to round, uh, depending on what, so you have to kind of adjust yeah, to that. Sure. And then everyone has like a little feet card that's just like banana pants strong. Yeah. But again, everyone has one. Everyone so has one. Everyone's like waiting, like when are they gonna flip that card? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and it's it's on the quicker side as well. So yeah, yeah. we actually really enjoyed our time. I enjoyed it, yeah, that was cool. It's got a great look and um, yeah, it's chip theory stuff. So that's, um, that's Roth. Number three is gonna be Rebirth. This is a new Reiner Knizia game. Um, the tile it's a, laying game. It's a new, it's a new old school tile laying game. Is, yeah. is how they've marketed it, which I'm like, I'm down. Yeah, Reiner Knizia has some legit old school tile laying <laughs> games, so yeah. <laughs> Reiner Knizia can do that. Uh, so this will be uh, a similar in that regard. Um, I don't know if it's adjacent to one specific right. game, but Reiner Knizia has made a lot of games where it's like you're placing out a tile on a turn, and where and how people place out those tiles and stuff will kind of reveal some of those little intricate, delicious yeah. strategies and things to explore. Because you're all like working together to like rebuild you're restoring, this, restore yeah. this area, but Scotland you're, after. you're doing it competitively. So yeah. you're also trying to like 
contribute to to the re yeah, restoring Yeah, that's you of playing your tiles as yeah. you kind of your contributions to the restoration. I think depending on how everyone's playing, there might be opportunities that yeah. then pop up. So you're trying to you know, have that, some of that foresight about like, I think we're going this direction. So mm -hmm. let me kind of invest in this to be able to capitalize yeah. uh, on that at the right time. Yeah, there's not a ton of information. It's really just the cover right yeah, now. Yeah, kind of just been like, announced, so. It's Ryan Kinsey, so I assume it'll be a relatively simple game with more depth than you're expecting. That is that's, the Marquis Knizia touch. Other than theme, that's his Marquis. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. King of theme. Well, this one, the art looks great. So it I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. That is Rebirth at number three. Number two is Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs. Dude, I want to play this. So I'm so bad. curious about Buttons and Bugs. This is like a little solo. Yeah, so a while ago, there was a, a thing called Gloomhold. Yeah, we someone, covered it here. It definitely yeah, hit the hotness. Someone <laughs> made it hit the hotness. It someone made did. with Isaac's permission. Isaac Chill just yeah, it's kind of like a, kind of a COVID kind of like a Gloomhaven project. that you could pay like yeah in, in your, your hand. hand. Yeah, and they took the base of that and then had like Nikki Valens uh, help develop it. Uh, I think one other person into like kind of a full game that was part of. Gloomhaven's like second edition big, the Grand Festival campaign or whatever it was called. Yep. Uh, this was part of a little bit, it's it's real small. I mean, it's like this teeny oh, tiny little box. But it has yeah. like tiny minis yeah. and stuff. Yes, it's very small box. Uh, especially compared to Gloomhaven, but yeah. what isn't small compared to that? Um, and yeah, it gives you kind of these little scenarios yeah, that I think are card. mostly on a card. Yeah. You have like a little bit of a map, uh, and I think you can move your mini around, and you have cards and stuff to use, and there's just all kind of miniature. Um, but it's like just a little, you know, quick, contain yeah. scenarios. So you're it's like, not like fighting the grand... big bugs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it's like so, super cute. Yeah, it's not the grand story of Gloomhaven, but it has like all that flavoring and something really kind of yeah. portable for one um, and, and kind of contained. So I think it's just such a great idea. I love that this started off as this passion project. And then, you know, uh, Seth Lafair ran with it and said like, this is actually great. Let's make this into something and do it up for real. So I really want to play this. Yeah. Uh, we played through the entirety of Gloomhaven. We 100%ed it. Yep. Uh, and so I really want to play this and just I'm see just like curious. what it offers. I've I heard just... it's really fun. So I'm yeah. just kind of like, I'm, I'm down. So excited. Yeah, it's, I think it's getting into people's hands right now. Yeah, and so I'm just like, not. very cool. Yeah, Buttons and Bugs, just, it's just so cute. And number one is Agamonia. This is a, yeah. a new uh, big one that's, again, delivering to people's hands. With our friend sure. Jeff from Fox and Meeple. Very excited. Um, sent us a big old picture of this game. It was like this huge <laughs> box. It's like Blue Maven size, another box full of minis. Huge game. But this is a big co-op uh, story-driven game where yes. you're making like really tough kind of like moral decisions yeah. that I think are going to change the game. But it seems like a lot of the stuff is going to deal with these like stamina chips that you have where a lot of things you're doing are taking your stamina. And you have to do tests and things like that. Yeah, yeah. and they're combat. You're going to be rolling out dice, but it's also going to take your stamina. And I always feel like these, a lot of these big games always have an interesting, not always, but sometimes have a really interesting stamina systems. Because that's always like, the decision space in games is always interesting of like, I have this pool of whatever it is. It might be money in some games. It might be like wood or stone in like a Euro game or stamina where it's like, okay, how, what's worth it for me to use this because yeah. this is precious, right? And, so, and what's the refresh rate on that resource yeah. in terms of how and when do I get it back? Yeah. Like what's the cooldown like? Which totally. seems to be a, a big thing in games right now. Yeah. Oathsworn uses that uh, and, and other games where it's like, if you do this thing, this, whatever you just did, it's not gonna yeah. be available for a while and how do you get it back to be able to yeah. use again? Which exactly. is really I know neat. your stamina chips, this when they flip over, that means you're getting wounded so that you're kind of like losing that stamina so yeah. you have less. So yeah, it seems cool. Um, and so yeah, Agamemnon is a big old, huge game, story game. Again, Jeff's the picture set was just massive, massive. <laughs> it's one of those massive games, but people are super into it. Uh, people have seemingly been enjoying it, but it's hitting people's hands. So people are talking about it a whole bunch right now. So the last thing we do is we always talk about the most played games of the month. So you can log your plays on BGG, especially Should. BGA. You can just like transfer over all your plays from BGA. On yeah, now, yeah, with BG which is stats cool, and yeah. everything kind of talks everything else now, which is like it's very, so very cool. cool. So the 10 most played games, number 10 is gonna be Spirit Island, which has 6,797 plays. A lot for a game that size. You yeah, know? especially one that's been out for so long. Spore Shuffle, I've contributed heavily to the plays on so this. So many it's plays. 7,019. It's so good on Board Game Arena to play it. Play and it. then shockingly low is Marvel Champions, uh, yeah. which has 7,400. 7, Usually that's like number two or three. Yeah, that's always up there. Uh, Heat Pedal to the Metal, always getting played. Also on Board Game Arena, it's at 7,701 play. Indeed, and Sea Salt and Paper has seven. 7,904 plays. Sky Team has 8,959 plays. Wingspan has 9,086 plays. Golly, you got Azul always Azul. around here, 9,464 plays. And then a brand new one, Star Wars Unlimited. Now granted, this is the month that it released and some of that, but yeah. got 
10,989 plays, but from only Dang. 100, 1,440 so people are unique playing. people. So people played a whole, to be fair, I know a bunch of people have played it, and yeah. people seem to really and enjoy it. And you play round after round, kind of. I really want to try that one. Very yeah. curious. And then, then number one. The normal is number one, although I'm going to call it now. Next month, this will not be number Ooh. one. Ark Nova is currently number one at 13,631 plays. So 3,000 more. The reason I say that is Terraforming Mars is now available on Board Game <laughs> Arena. It's been the number one requested, I think, game on there for quite some time. So I assume that, at the very least, it's going to be in the top 10 yeah. next time. But I could see it being number one or number two. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see if I'm right. All right, so that's the most played games month and the hottest games of the month. Let's quickly talk about some Murf picks. My Murf pick is by user Ben Bateson, and this is a geek list talking about games that only you played this month. So again, you can log your games on BGG as we talked about when we talked about the most played games of the month, but you can also check to see who else played that game. And so this is a geek list of people putting in games that at least according to BGG and, and, regist and registering that you played the game that month, that you're the only person who did so. Now, chances are someone else on the planet played that game, but they didn't log on BGG, so therefore it's not real. And so I really like that. I think it's really, really fun to kind of think like, man, I'm the only person who played that this month or this week. I just think it's really cool. I checked and I don't think any of the games that we played, we're the only ones. So apparently we don't play obscure enough stuff, but it's also fun to go through the list to see games that are probably gonna be pretty obscure or games at least that maybe are a little bit older that people don't play anymore because there's only one log of that game and it's, that, it's this one person who logged it. And so it's kind of a cool way to learn about some games that a lot of people probably don't know about. So make sure to check out the geek list and again, log your games because then you can show up on this list because maybe you're the only person who played it that month. Maybe the only person who played Terraforming Mars this month. It's not likely, but it's technically possible. My Murph pick, uh, Eric Harden made a, uh, a chipboard dice tower. Uh, it made a design for it, but one that is super small and portable. So this is one that when you disassemble it, it actually folds down to about the size of a poker card. It's a little bit thicker than a poker card, but really super small. So you can literally like put a dice tower in your pocket uh, and carry it around. I think that is super cool. Uh, they've done other kind of DIY gaming accessory projects and things like that. And they take you through the process of like how you can make one of these for yourself. I think it's just kind of whimsical, this idea of like any point you could pop out like do, 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 a tiny little dice tower and get to roll a whole bunch of dice in there and stuff, especially given its size, it can actually like hang and, and roll your, your various dice. So I just like seeing uh, people being inventive, having fun with this hobby, creating stuff. There's a bit of like really well, you know, engineered a, a dice tower for yourself there where it's nice and sturdy, the chipboard's good and stuff. So it's small, but not like flimsy. And just the idea that I could just put it in my pocket so I'm ready to game literally any time, that is just magical to me. All right, so some Murph picks. So at the very end of the video, we always talk about our personal favorite game of the month. So also down in the comment, make sure to let us know what your favorite game of the month Hate was. Mike, why don't you take his way? All right, man, there's so many to choose from. I've got like we some of that, that we yeah. have uh, classics that we played again, but I'm gonna go with Inventors of the South Tigris. We just covered it on our own personal yes. channel. Uh, this is the third game in the South Tigris trilogy from Garfield Games. They do these kind of trilogies of games. Uh, Inventors is uh, really cool because you have a kind of shared infrastructure, yeah. which is something that's kind of throughout the South Tigris trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, where you are coming up with ideas for inventions. And then I might come up with an idea, but then maybe Nick is the one to actually build a prototype of that yeah. idea. And then maybe another player is the one who tests that prototype. And then finally, uh, one of all of us or all of us could publish about that uh, invention. So it's this kind of like cool thing where not, you, no one really kind of owns anything, these not ideas really, yeah. and stuff. And you can kind of, uh, benefit from what other people are doing and there's resource management. There's these kind of crafts folk that you are uh, using and leveling up as you go. There's dice manipulation in it, worker placement, dice placement, um, a lot of stuff going on. Big crunchy game, yeah, but uh, it's, it's really cool. Light. Yeah, to see this kind of trilogy come to a close and they really uh, ended on a high note. So that's my pick yeah, of the month. It's really good. My pick of the month is gonna be The Search for Lost Species. Um, <sighs> good call. Uh, which is kind of a sequel to The Search for Lost, uh, Search for Planet X rather. Uh, we played this a couple different times. Uh, I played it solo a couple different times, um, competitive a couple times. Yeah. Um, it's just really, really good. Um, this is a game where you're trying to find the lost species and you're doing that through deduction. And the deduction you get is from finding other animals on this like island that you're on. And all the animals have logic rules. So it's like a python. The python is not next to any couscouses, which are these little like marmot looking things. Yeah. 
So you know, if you find the Python, then every spot connected to that Python can't have a couscous in it because you know right. that's never allowed. The couscous is all, oh, there's three of them and they're all within two of the other two couscous. So you're like, oh, if you find one, you know the other two are somewhere they have nearby. have to be nearby, yeah. <laughs> and so through that, you're gonna deduce where animals are and eventually allow you to find the lost species. And you're basically trying to race to do so by finding these animals, by learning these logic rules and deducing it down. I really like the search for planet X where you're looking for planet X. Similar thing where there's logic rules that certain kind of planets and stuff have. But I just, I really like this one a lot. It's just yeah. so much fun. I really enjoy deduction games and both of these games play really, really well solo, which is one of the reasons why I like it because it's app run. Yeah, you're actually playing against the app, which the app is a player that literally doesn't know the answer. So yeah. you're trying to beat a computer as it tries to do yeah, it as just, well, which is like, it just works really well. There's like another search for, I think for like aliens now coming out at some point this year. So like UAPs. I'm all in on this whole series, but I really like search for lost species. And I got to play it a bunch last month. So I'm very yeah, excited nice. about that. Those are our picks, everybody. Get your picks for a favorite game you played, new or old. What's the favorite thing you heard about this month? Get yeah. all that in the comments below and we will catch y'all next month. Bye everybody.